Hey all friends, welcome to the channel, Bob here, and welcome to, um, this is like a channel burp video, just to tell you what the hell is going on with the channel. Um, well, I guess it's about this time of year generally, I think last couple of years, I've done a vi when, I, when I do a video in a new year, I normally start off by saying, this year's going to be great for the channel, I'm going to do loads of stuff, I want to do this, that and the other, blah de blah de blah and it never happens, and that's just how it goes, I guess, really. Um, I do want to do more, but... But I don't. Uh, some of that is um, external issues or internal issues, and some of that is just my own self, really. You know, it's, if you've been a friend of the channel for a, any length of time, um, you'll know I've got like a long term chronic illness, and those things are kind of, um, uh, what should we say? They're kind of like a little, well, kind of like quite a large gremlin on your shoulder, constantly nagging away all the time, like every minute of the day. Even during the night sometimes, when I wake up um, in the evening and whatnot. Yeah, it, you can't get away from it, you know, and it's, uh, and it does affect your, I guess it, will affect, it greatly affects your productivity and your, just your general kind of uh, well-being, you know. And people in the past have said to me, oh, you need to be mentally stronger, ooh, blah de blah all that kind of stuff and let me tell you you know just getting up and doing stuff and keeping a positive attitude is <clears throat> is a uh, yeah is a, is is a lot so what they're generally asking for is even more than that and that's not always uh, not always possible um other things as well though you know it, it's also to do with just the <clears throat> environment around so content creation and social media you know as i've said before you know I, I really don't like google i don't like youtube i don't like people in charge um don't like their ideologies that's what it seems to be all about and uh, that kind of thing so it's more important than actually providing people with what they want um uh, yeah and so there's all that kind of thing as well where i don't really like doing stuff on youtube because i don't like youtube but um <clears throat> you know it, it is it is the platform not much we can do about that. A number of you in the past have said to me that I should try out some of the other platforms. And I have tried them out and looked at them. I think the problem is, is that pretty much generally everyone finds that it doesn't work out particularly well. Um, I think the issue is, is just that people get used to going to one spot. And because YouTube has so much content, that's generally the place that people go. You know, And, and getting them to try other places is not is, is very hard. You know, And... Uh, that's pretty much why I'm kind of uh, kind of still here. Um, the other thing as well is that it, it's I must confess to finding it difficult to know what to do with the channel. Um, well, there are things that I want to do with the channel um, and that I can work towards um, that I've kind of th been thinking about recently. But up and up until you know this last year or so, it got to a point where I wasn't really sure what to do. You know, and it, it's uh, it primarily became an MMO channel. And since Christmas, I haven't really, well, since, since before Christmas, I haven't played any MMOs. Um, <laughs> so I guess that's part of the reason. Um, and it's one of those things where, like, uh, for me personally, I've reached that point with MMOs where I'm not fed up with them or the genre or whatever it may be. Um, I'm, I'm desperate for an MMO to get my teeth into. But unfortunately, I just find them incredibly disappointing. Um, from right, right from the AAA stuff at the top, because of things like monetization and other, and quality of output for such big companies, and f unfortunately, right down to the indie MMOs. Um, I hate to say it, but I've become more and more disillusioned over the last year or so. I feel that um, I feel that we're being hoodwinked a bit, or I feel like I'm being hoodwinked a bit, kind of, which kind of means like conned, <clears throat> not deliberately or maliciously. But I did a little. I did a little bit of research recently, and I went around to some of the um, indie MMO, to, in, indie MMOs that are in development, um, ones that are currently playable, not ones that you currently can't play. And pretty much everywhere, pretty much in every game, somewhere in the marketing, um, you find a sentence that essentially says, "We know you've been looking for this type of MMO for years. You know, MMOs are now all, all modern MMOs are rubbish." You know, we're getting back to the classic MMO um, feel and development um, game mechanics, and this is and so this is the game for you. And actually, they're not. You know, that's what I'm finding more and more. I mean, to be fair, a lot of that is to do with things like um, uh, budgetary constraints, which I understand. Um, 
things like yeah things like um like manpower also things like talent you know when you when you think back to the 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 uh the classic era you know they the people creating those games are really like the the grand the granddaddies of of mmo development you know and so you're fighting against a budgetary problem but also in many cases like a, a talent problem it, you know it's just it's not a criticism it's just a one of those things it's just something that happens you know um and yeah and I think what's what, I think what's what's basically happening is is that we're trying to be sold something that the games are really not. I've become really disillusioned with indie MMOs, particularly ones that are claiming to be classic. First of all, everyone's claiming it now, um, which kind of cheapens the message because if someone says we're offering you what you want, but there's ten people saying the same thing, it kind of yeah, it kind of cheapens the cheapens the message a bit. I think. Um, and these games are just not offering that. Just it's just my opinion. I'm, I'm I'm sure there are people out there playing. I'm sure there are people out there watching playing Shroud of the Avatar, um, you know, Embers of Drift, Project Gorg, whatever it may be, and you're enjoying it. But from previous videos that I've done like this, the reality is is that is that you're probably in the minority. You know, because I get a lot of messages from people saying, "God, I'm desperate for a new MMO, but there's just nothing out there." And the thing is, is that there are games. There are games out there claiming. Um, that they're the games that we're looking for, um, but but it, they're clearly not because people are not playing them. Well, people are playing them, but then they're just leaving in droves. You know, Embers of Drift compared to what it was like for release, there's you know it, it, catastrophic drop off in in play account. Really, um, it didn't go back to as bad as it was kind of like during the beta period and stuff, obviously, but. It's still it's still a massive drop off, and when you look at MMO numbers, they're always about the same. When I look at Project Gorgon, Embers of Drift, when I looked at Shroud of the Avatar, and whatever, no matter how many White Knights told, kept telling you that they see new players every day, the num the, the actual numbers didn't go up on a daily basis, you know. So it's, and they would go down more often than not, you know. So it was just yeah, it, it's. Uh, so clearly these games are not sticking and not, they're not resonating with people and you can point at things and say oh it's because the, visually they're not very nice or they've got no magic for example or whatever it may be but I, I don't think it is I just don't think they're offering that classic experience you know you I think what seems to be happening is that they're taking an element or a mechanic from a classic MMO putting it into their game and then just saying here's a classic MMO for you but actually you know Games like EverQuest Ultra Online, Asheron's Call, City of Heroes, Vanguard, whatever whatever games you want to, even World of Warcraft originally, you know, whatever MMO you want to look at, they were more than just a single mechanic. You know, the classic experience is more than just a single element or mechanic or whatever it may be. And uh, you know, and as I said, like I've got some, I've got some sympathy because to create an MMO with with all of that stuff surrounding you know just create a classic mmo with a classic feel to give you everything that 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 that, that comes with you know it there's a financial input it's a financial requirement for that and a, and a manpower manpower requirement and i understand that some of these developers don't have it but maybe we're at a point where we need to stop they need to stop telling us that they're offering us a classic experience and blah de blah because it feels like it's become a bit of a meme um i mean i, I mean if there is one out there um, that we're unable to play yet, then I'll look forward to it, you know, because we all want one. But the reality is that um, there, there are, do, from what I tell from the comments on my channel, there do seem to be a lot of people waiting for that MMO. But the MMOs that are currently available to play that are telling us they're offering that are clearly not. Um, yeah, and so I'm, I don't really feel inclined to, to, to kind of, uh, you know, load up and play anything at all it's just they're just not offering the that experience and um yeah and as i said you can't like the, the most recent game i played was embers of drift and embers of drift essentially what it seems to have done is taken the combat pacing of everquest and that's it um put it into their game and they're calling it a classic experience but everything around it is just not you know there's very little meat on the bones i would say it's not just about and when i say meat on the bones it's not just about like the amount of dungeons the game's got 
or the amount of areas the game's got. It's all the other stuff that surrounds it, you know. And um, yeah, I just think that um, I just think that it's. It, I'm, I'm fine, I just found them disappointing, and I feel that they're telling me they're offering me something that that they're not, for whatever the reason may be. I don't know what it is, but that, that's just my opinion. As I said, I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are. You know, I'm sure there are people watching this who are playing an indie MMO that's claiming it's it's giving a classic experience and you're enjoying it and that's fine but you can't just take a mechanic out of one of those games and say we're now giving you a classic experience I don't think it works that way those games were, were a lot lot more than just a particular um, a particular um, yeah a particular mechanic or, or gameplay theme or whatever it may be um, so I'm not playing MMOs um, which is a problem for the channel in the sense that it's kind of becoming an MMO, an MMO channel um, Looking ahead, what I have been doing, what I have been spending a lot of my time doing is playing and researching um, just retro games. Uh, it was funny because my son came over at Christmas, my youngest son, and we, uh, I've, got, I've got a couple of those kind of like mini consoles, like I've got a mini PlayStation and a mini PC Engine. My family got me a mini Egret 2, which is a Japanese candy cab, but like the mini version that's got some games pre-installed. But you can kind of fit, fit it up to a TV and stuff as well. And I was playing, we played quite a lot of those games. It was interesting, the conversation we had, you know, because we, I think we kind of determined that gaming nowadays, like modern games, are more experiences than games. And I think one of the interesting things about playing those old, gen, you know, sprite-based games generally, um, kind of from like, you know, like late 80s into the night, well, actually early 80s, some of them into the 90s, were it was more about the mechanics, the actual gameplay mechanics. You know, so if you if you think of a game like The Witcher or Cyberpunk or whatever, they've got gameplay mechanics in them. Um, but I would argue that that they're not really gamey in a sense, in a sense that I'm, I'm talking about for for earlier games. The games have become more of an experience, which I love. I mean, I love Cyberpunk. I'm just playing it through for the fourth time, and I'm not bored. <laughs> Still not bored. Um, it's a fantastic experience, um, but yeah, but but games. I was playing these games. I'm thinking these are these are what I. If someone said to me video games, these these are what I would class as video games. Um, I know that it's a, people may think it's an all encompassing term, but that that's kind of what I. Maybe it's just my age, you know, from the the era that I played games from or the, the, the age I started playing games from um, pretty much when gaming became available I started playing really you know, like back in the late 70s kind of early 80s kind of era um, and playing them I just I just realized what I would what I've been missing out on by not playing them um, you know it, and, and the first thing to yourself is it a long nostalgia thing or whatnot but when you but when you've sat there with with a simple I can't remember what the game was called but I I, I, I I can't remember what the one of the games were called. One of the games was called Quicks, which is a, a Taito game from um, the early '80s. And basically, it's like a it's like a square, and within the square, there's a, a like a a baddie, like a, a, a beam of light, randomly shoots around the square, and you need to colour as much of the square in as you can. Well, you need to colour in a, you need to fill in a certain amount of the square percentage wise before you move on to the next level, and. And you kind of, you know, you 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 try and do shapes quickly, um, in within the square, you know, to 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 colour in the area that you need before the monster, before the the mob gets you or whatever. And um, and it's such a simple but genius idea. And two hours later, I was thinking to myself, this is not really nostalgia, is it? <laughs> this is just ridiculously good game design. And there's another platform game as well that I was playing where you uh, you had to. I can't remember the name of the name, but another Taito game on the Egret 2, and uh, you had to you had to get to some keys and release the keys uh, to to then exit the level. Um, but the mechanic of but there were mobs would spawn and fly around the screen, um, and the the, the the screen it was like it's like a one screen game, and the screen was like all platforms and stuff that you had to run around and whatnot, and the mobs chased you around. And the mechanic for you just dealing with the mobs were bombs that you dropped, but you you could drop a bomb to your left or your right. Um, you could use bombs to because mob because the the AI for the mobs would try to avoid the bombs, so you could try you could you could hold mobs off or try and corner them in an area by dropping bombs. Um, 
the bombs kind of went off timed as well so you had to time, time it so we got all this kind of stuff going on which was pretty amazing and then there was different ways of scoring um, so the, the mobs would kind of form before they, before they would chase you so you could try and destroy them before they formed but you get less score less bonus so there's tons of things different things going on within the game that's just that's just a small amount of the different mechanics that the game had and again you know a couple of hours later i realized it wasn't um it wasn't uh, nostalgia i was thoroughly enthralled by all of the game mechanics um but this is that's not a knock on new games you know I, as i said i i i love all games you know and i'm still playing uh, more modern games but that made me realize what I've been missing um, and since then I've been kind of looking into ways of incorporating it into the channel you know so there's something called a, a mister uh, which incorporates like an FPGA board which allows you to um, load in uh, like key, you, you can just it's like a reusable um, PCB like chip memory chip and um, P CPU where you just load a key, you just load a core into, and when you finish it, you can load another core into it. Um, and there are lots of things like this, like people use Raspberry, Raspberry Pis. You've got software emulation and that kind of thing. But the Mister, while it while it has less games at the moment available than some of those other um, systems or software emulations, um, the actual input lag is really really low. So if you're like almost unnoticeable. So if you're playing fighters or or shoot 'em ups or whatever it may be. Then yeah, the Mister is becoming more and more popular. There's a load of stuff for it, um, all the Neo Geo stuff. Um, basically, you buy this box which you can build yourself, or you can buy a pre-built box. Um, you do an update from the internet, and it's got loads of stuff: 8-bit, 16-bit computers, like computers from Japan that we never had here. All the consoles. Um, I say all the consoles up to the PlayStation at the moment. They're working on the Saturn. They're working on a Saturn core, but the Saturn's quite tricky because at the moment it's requiring more RAM than the than the the Mister has. But I think they're trying to work it into it so that it works. Um, yeah, all the 8-bit, 16-bit consoles, computers, Japanese stuff, uh, loads of arcade cores as well, Neo Geo, CPS one and two. If you're a Capcom fan, and they're creating more and more cores as time goes by. You've got a load of just people out there just working on cores for for the. Um, for the, for the mister um and you can just you can, you can just quickly switch between them and just play whatever games you want it's a phenomenal little box um so that's probably that, well that's definitely going to be something that's, that i'm going to be getting at some point in the future um also as well the the emu i say emulation um with the, with this people people are more calling it like a hardware reproduction because it's so good um so I'm really excited to get that kind of thing. I've been kind of digging out some of my old console stuff as well. Um, and one of the things that I was considering getting was a, something like a, a retro tink, you know, so I can link, link up old consoles to a capture card and capture some, you know, and play those on for the, you know, kind of turning the channel into, not turning into, but turning into, I guess, more of a, what it started out as actually before MMOs took over, like more of a retro gaming channel. But obviously, I'll still be playing MMOs because a lot of those are retro. Let's be let's be honest, They're the ones that I I enjoy playing anyway. Um, but then the chance of a candy cab came up. I had a candy cab a number of years ago, and selling it was a massive mistake. Um, it's a wondrous thing, you know. It really takes me back to really evokes lots of memories from the early nineties, uh, well, kind of mid nineties. I would probably say actually. Um, so the chance of buying a candy cab has come up um, and I'm currently going through the process of trying to get that. So, yeah, it, it's like my gaming is taking a different turn. And so I want to try and incorporate that into the channel. So to a certain extent, you know, the channel will take a bit of a different turn from a gaming point of view as well. Um, with the Mister, uh, there is a Mister K that's got a jammer connection on. So I could plug that straight into a candy cab. But it's got HDMI out still, so I could then um, play play it on on play it on the on the candy cab, but then still record footage and kind of do YouTube and stream and that kind of thing with it as well. So that's something that I'm looking at doing. Um, yeah, but as I said, <laughs> I do this all the time. You know, I do this every year probably. Do a video saying that more's going to happen, more more stuff's going to happen on the channel. But 
you know, whether it does or not, I don't know. I want it to, but, you know, there are a number of factors in the way. But certainly, like, from my, my own perspective, my own gaming is changing a bit. Um, I'm not changing, actually. I'm just incorporating... I'm just going back and incorporating something that I've always been passionate about, retro gaming. I used to be a big collector. As I said, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to dig out some old consoles and stuff that I've got lying around and trying to get those running again. I know I've got, like, a Mega Drive and a Dreamcast and... I'm not sure if I still got my Super Famicom or not. I kind of had a Japanese Super Famicom that had like a, some switches on it that you could play Power and NTSC and you could do 50, 60 hertz and stuff. A Saturn and all that kind of thing. I'm not sure if I've got them anymore, but I've got a PlayStation. Um, not many games to those systems, actual proper games, you know, in a, <laughs> well, as opposed to the Mister. But yeah, so that's kind of what well, I'm that's going to kind of be going to be a project for me over the coming year and I'd like to do some of that stuff on the channel so that's probably what you'll see as well as other MMO stuff you know I'll, I'm thinking of going back to EverQuest uh, just for that MMO uh, hit until something else happens um, yeah but as far as the MMOs I mean there are some MMOs that I'm I still want to go back to and play so, for example, Lost Dark, which is a modern MMO, but the reason I stopped playing it was because the classes I wanted to play weren't out in the game yet. But a couple of them, I think one has come out and one is coming out, so I might go back and try that game again as well. I kind of still, I'm still a new world player, kind of <laughs> hanging in there. Um, I love in, I love logging in and running around the world. Um, it's probably the best MMO for running around the world, gathering if, and, and soaking up the atmosphere, if you like that kind of thing. But that sort of thing can only take you so far, you know, when it when it when that's all you're doing and you've got no long term purpose. I think that's the other thing I'm finding of MMOs is that I need something that gives that, that I, where I feel like there's a long term purpose. Whereas a lot, a lot of the Indian MMOs, again, it's difficult for them and I understand from like a financial point of view, so from a content point of view. But when I play them, I don't feel that I've got any long term purpose because there isn't really a long term purpose in a lot of them at the moment. They're still working on that. So what are you working towards? I'm not I'm not sure, you know. And I know people go on about it being the journey and not the destination, but that's but I still think the journey needs to have a purpose. Um Yeah, and that's one of the things that I also find I'm kind of missing at the moment. But anyway, guys, that's it really. That's all I've got to say. Just a little channel update for you. Um so you can so I can just let you know what's going on, really. Um there hasn't been a huge amount. Uh but I, as I said, like I'm, I'm, I'm going to be changing, not changing. I think saying changing, I'm not changing. Uh, I'm just going to be incorporating some different, like primarily retro gaming into my, my, kind of gaming project type things that I do. Yeah, and I will hopefully be incorporating incorporating that into the uh, the channel as well. It's going to be a it sounds like it's going to be an expensive, <laughs> expensive project. But there you go, retro gaming unfortunately has, has gone up in uh the, the cost is the value has gone up uh, crazily um, looking into it, it appears as though you get some people moaning kind of rightfully so looking into it a lot of people are saying that you know um over the last couple of years particularly since um uh particularly since uh the lurgy came about uh two or three years or three years ago now maybe um, a lot of people came a lot of people just were bored and never had anything to do with their money you know, so they they heavily invested in uh, retro gaming and arcade cabinets and stuff, and now all the prices of everything has just shot up to to stupidness. Um, and it is unfortunately, it is now seems to be more of a people are buying stuff as an investment rather than to enjoy and game on. But uh, you know, that's life. What can you do? Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you again soon.